In this next episode of Houseplant 101 Back to Basics, we're going to go through a real-life houseplant home makeover. We'll apply much of what we've already learned in the first two episodes of this series, including how to assess light in the home, choosing the right plants for you and your space, and how to create green space when no light is available. This hour-long special has been made possible by our sponsors, including Premium Soil by Espoma Organic, New state-of-the-art grow lights by GE Lighting, and plants provided by Plant Shed. It's a gorgeous spring day here in Central Park, and I'm about to see one of my best friends in the whole world, Damon, who has just moved back to New York City, and he wanted help greenifying his apartment. So, of course, I wanted to be able to help him do that. So I am going to see him right now. Come in. So good to be back. Great so to see you. Come in, come in. It looks like you have uh, some more plants since last I saw you. Oh, we got a thing or two. Come take a look. Yeah. This one's new. This is new. Yeah, an old friend of mine just donated that. I took it. Yeah, I love the, um, these finger-like qualities and how they unravel. Yeah, this has actually just been put into a new genus called thematophyllum. So congratulations, you have like a new genus. <laughs> this is fantastic. We might have to talk about leaving it here or not. <laughs> we'll figure out where it goes. Damon is a philosophy professor in New York City. He also happens to love playing classical piano, which really is the centerpiece of his home. Now that he's in New York for a while, he wants to breathe new life into his space with a little bit of green. I sat down with Damon to talk about his goals for greening up his space. Well, I love this space. The space is really built around the piano. And so that's the starting point. And then from there, what would make it feel livable also? And I think having living things in it would be a good first step towards that. It's been this way for several years, and I want to bring in a new energy to it. I want it to have a real different feel. The plants I have here are more symbolic value. They're things that you know, have a place in my life. There's a little story about each one, in a sense. What I want to bring in is something that makes me feel like I'm not so far from nature, <laughs> you know, that I'm not stuck in an urban environment without any recourse to something green. Yeah. Just to have some living thing in a room, it changes the room. It's like having a piece of art or just or a dog or something. Yeah. Right now it's a little bit sterile. Yeah. Well, let's have a little bit further look around. Actually, I'd like to take a look at the type of light that you're getting right. here and because I think a lot of people can relate to the fact that oh, I have a window in at least one part of my house, but I don't have much light in the other part. But this, to me, um, it feels a little bit more like my light in my kitchen, which um, is a nice gentle light. Have you ever noticed any kind of like harsh sunlight coming through here or no? As we move into spring, you know, as the sun starts heading further north, mm -hmm when it rises, we had a little, an hour or so of sun coming in, maybe a little bit more, right. but mainly it's, a fair amount of reflected light mm -hmm. and ambient light yeah. and almost no direct light. Okay, great. So you probably just get a nice lot of uh, moderate light and so getting moderate light plants versus like your poor, poor crassula. You might not want to get too many more succulents in this window. But um, right now, this one that you have over here, this is called a Schlumbergera. I believe it's a Schlumbergera truncata. It's an actual type of cactus, but right. not like the typical kind of cactus that we all know with like the spiky... Um, glockids and things along those lines. This is actually a jungle cactus which sits in the understories of trees. So the fact that it gets a little bit more dappled light and the fact that you're getting it to bloom all the time, even if it's at weird times, tells me that that plant is probably happy and that would be the exact type of plant that I would try to fit in an area and in a window like this if that's the kind of light that you're actually getting. Well then we just need some trees to go over it yeah. and we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. You are like directly like between north and east, so you are going to get a little bit of that sunrise. North generally means that it's a, a, a lower light area, but with that east, you're kind of saved because it gives you a little bit more, I would just guess, moderate light. And you're, of course, having to work with some of these buildings outside, which might actually obstruct some of the light coming in. But I have this uh, PAR meter. So this actually checks the photons of light coming in because 
the way that plants at least see light is a little bit different than us. So mm -hmm. it's for us, the blue and the red ends of the spectrum actually look a lot dimmer, whereas to a plant, they could actually utilize all photons of light. So what I'm going here is I'm measuring this in unit moles per meter squared per second, and this is around 100, 111. So this is kind of in the kind of indirect to moderate light range, which is really good because if this was just a northern aspect, you might be in really low light range, and that would restrict the kinds mm -hmm. of plants that we could actually put in this window. That makes sense. Now, as far as care, because I know you do travel some here and there. I like I travel quite a bit, and yeah. so, so um, I'm only here point? about half the time, and usually I'll have someone in my family or friend come by and just water everything once a week. Okay, and once a week. That's really my care pattern. Okay. I'm happy to fertilize periodically if I knew what mm -hmm. to do, mm -hmm. but in terms of steady state care, once a week is really what's available okay. for my lifestyle. And this is like really good to know because now we have a sense of like the lighting here and then what your schedule is. Because mm -hmm. if you're a once a week kind of guy, then we don't want to get anything that's like too high maintenance. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Should we take a look at some of the other spaces? Great. The nice fellow who sold me the apartment was also the architect who remodeled it. Yeah. And when I got it from him many years ago, He'd done this with a window, which was terrific, with these very plants. So the same plants? The same and actual How specimens. many years ago was that? He probably put them in almost a decade ago. Oh my God. It's been an extremely long time, <laughs> but he put some kind of special soil, I think, in mm -hmm. these plastic cups within these planters. Mm. And they're lined up so that when you water one, see, it yeah. drips down into the others. Yeah, I see. And oh my God, these haven't been like... They haven't been moved. Yeah, for, for so long. For so long. Look at this. But they've survived. Yeah, and these are these are really, which is just terrific. I think this. Is I a, love these. It's such a great use of an interior window. Yeah. Like this is a pleasant place to look now, instead of looking out know. at a building. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, I think this is also a testament to the types of plants that he used here, and I don't know if he had some prior knowledge to this, but this is um, a philodendron heteraceum. These are devil's ivy, epiprenum oriums, which are just survivors, really easy. Yeah. They sprawl all over, as you could see. We might actually, um, I might suggest actually trimming some of these depending, um, because they will bush out a little bit more if you, if you trim some. I just like this being as green as possible. So it doesn't need to be manicured for a certain style. Perfect. But I'm also worried that at some point, like, are they about, are they on their last legs? <laughs> so whatever we need to do to make them healthier, greener, yeah. bushier, Perfect. would be lovely. So let me show you this over here. Yeah. Under these cabinets you see here, mm -hmm. this is a region where, as you're coming to the apartment, it would be great if it felt kind of like more forest floor, because you have that, just that sense liminally that there's kind of green underfoot. So I'd love to do something almost ambient here. Yeah. And these are real candles, and they're not the ones that kind of like are, yeah. you know, fake candles. So These are real candles with, okay, with yeah, wicks that are hard to light and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and um, real stones and... Yeah, so that's a region something could happen in. That's fantastic. Yeah, I love the idea of like feeling like you're walking through a forest, especially if you could get the candles to light too. It might yeah. feel like a little fairy forest. Exactly. Should we go see the kitchen now? Great. So you do have a little window in here and you have some plants. Yeah. These guys also are troopers. <laughs> They're on the same once a week treatment that everything else is. Okay. This guy's kind of fun because he just explores <laughs> and goes wherever. This is a clivia. These are actually get some really um, beautiful flowers. It's native to South Africa. This could probably appreciate a little bit more light because you do, it's a little bit darker here. Yeah. Only because you're in this kind of like alleyway right here. And yeah, this is again that your, mm -hmm. your devil's ivy, the pothos. This is a trusty, reliable yeah. plant for, for your area. But we could see, you know, a little bit. Do you cook at all? Um, I make peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> well, sometimes just peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> peanut butter on a spoon. <laughs> you know, I, I get a lot of water out of the tap. Then, so I'm in here for that. Okay, well, we'll see if we can maybe you know, change your mind. Because there are some really interesting, like, kitchen things that we could install, you know, that have some herbs. And so maybe it will inspire you to, to cook a little bit, you know, get a, a pan and a little olive yeah. oil, a little salt. I can imagine that happening. <laughs> okay. We'll try. We'll try that. Yeah, so you do get a little bit of ambient light. Now, 
this will probably be a little obviously less light because light diffuses. Yeah. So if we were to do anything here, it would have to be some like lower light plants, but would you be open to that? I'd love to have something here, both so that when you walk by, you kind of have the green, but also when you're below looking up, mm. it's neat to think that the forest continues. Yeah. Now here could be an interesting space too. It's a little bit more of like this dark nook. So if we wanted to have something here, I think we would probably need a little bit of extra help like with a grow light. Is that something that you'd be open to? I think it could be neat because the architect made an interior window here between two rooms. And so it's as though it's a window to the outside. Right, and so the idea of something right. growing would be, you know, in keeping with that idea. And it looks like you're not really using this space or underutilizing it. <laughs> That's adequate. <laughs> That's a fair statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that would be a really cool thing to do. But again, creating its own sun, I think, would be, yeah. um, you know, in order for here. Because this almost seems just even a little bit further back from this window compared to there already seems a little bit darker. I feel like as we can progressively go this <laughs> way, it's going to get darker and darker. We're going to go into the cave now. All right. So it's totally dark back here where I sleep, which is great for sleeping, but it sure would be nice if there were some way to have something alive, Yeah. you know. Is there, is this the light? That's yeah, here we here? go. Okay, so that's the amount of light that you're actually getting here. We could be up for the challenge and figure out what we could do here. Great. Without having to get you a plastic plant. <laughs> there I won't go. <laughs> and then this is your bathroom. The architect comes from a background of designing spas and so forth. Um, and so he put in all these touches that are things you have in spas, different ways of raining and so forth. Oh, that's so nice. I'm not sure if you, it can rain like oh, this. Oh, wow. <laughs> or it can rain like that. Oh <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So, you know. That's like a waterfall it's right like there. Different forms of waterfall. Actually, it's perfect because if you ever wanted to like do a nice gentle rain on your plants, you could use that one, not that one. That one like would just probably blow all the soil out of your plant. Uh -huh. <laughs> With the little light that you're getting through here, which again, you're getting this kind of northeast exposure, but it's a little bit further back in kind of this alleyway. So we'll have to go with probably a lower light plant. Yeah but it also bounces at least some of the light back into this area ever so slightly. So it'll probably give the plants like a second chance for a little bit of light. So I think I have a really good sense of your space, but I would like to get a little bit of a better sense of the types of plants that you like. So would you want to go to a plant shop and just check out some of the stuff and you could tell me what you're thinking? That sounds great. Let's do it. Let's do it. Damon and I took a walk to his neighborhood plant shop, Plant Shed which is a family-owned and operated foliage and floral shop in New York City that's been around since the 1950s. So, let, I mean, let's take a little look around. Is there anything here that, um, that you gravitate towards or maybe that you've seen that you particularly like? We had these in my house in Colorado. Yeah. Yeah, these are cool. These are snake plants. Uh -huh. And what I like about them is that they really go vertical. You could put them in yeah. some tight places. What I like is that these leaves are so like rigid. It's almost like they're wood, mm. you know, but it's inside. So it's not just floppy, yeah. you know? Now this would actually be a really good plant for your place, especially because you have that really large, you know, northeastern window and yeah. then it's a little bit darker, but these actually can grow well in a range of light. Are there any specific places in your house that you could actually see this working? Yeah, well, you know, it's because it's kind of severe, mm -hmm kind of on that, on the platform near a piano could be good, mm -hmm. you know, because it has like a simple cut to it. Yeah, I, I like your thinking because I was thinking the same thing around, around your piano. Now, this is a tree that I was actually thinking, this is quite small, but these could get, I have one that's about 14 feet in my house. I was thinking that this could be a great possibility. I know you want like, a redwood or a spruce a red tree would be nice. in your house. <laughs> it might be a little challenging, but this is a ficus lyrata. This is a fiddle leaf fig, and oftentimes these are what people get when they want a large tree, and uh -huh. you have such a high ceiling yeah. that this could actually grow into something of, to be a veritable size and could have like quite a span of canopy too as well. So we could see if they have something that's a little bit um, larger yeah, there. Yeah, get a sense for what that looks yeah. like. Yeah. Are these succulents? These guys? These are succulents. And that requires a lot of sun. Yeah. So, that's not, so we're, not, we're not in the succulent game. 
I would say that if you were to do succulents, um, I don't see anything that might be here, but you know, Haworthia or Gasteria might be there, a little bit of a darker succulent that might be able to be right in your window. You do have a Crassula, like that jade right in your window, okay. and that's a succulent. Right. But those I would definitely be putting right up against your window. The jade's not terribly happy all yeah. the time. <laughs> it could, it could in, enjoy a little bit more sun. Now these, these might be a little bit of a harder one for you, but these don't require a tremendous amount of light. And I was thinking something like this to create that, like a jungle vibe in your bathroom. Something really dense like that yeah, with, something... the, with the kind of black stem. Yeah. It's like layers of it. Yeah, and then you could see that they're quite small, but... Oh, I see. But yeah. um, if you get a bunch of them, you could have this, you know, you almost like could run your hands through these when you're in the tub. Yeah, you want it to be <laughs> physical in there. You want yeah. to feel like it's... Like you're brushing against the, yeah, you know, against the, the leaves the in the forest. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> little things like this are kind of cool that have yeah. a different. This one I think would work in a little bit more of a terrarium setting. So if we decide oh, yeah. to go on like a terrarium route for you, this could be a very cool like addition to uh, to your terrarium and have a little bit of shock of color, yeah. which you don't always get. You know, we and we could create like a terrarium, especially have if we have a light on the terrarium. Um, a situation where we could actually have that in one of the darker corners of your room. That would be cool, because I like some of these things that have like a darker hue to them mm -hmm. also sometimes, like color, but a, like a dark background, like a, yeah. the black pants, that really appeals yeah. to me. I think that's fun. Yeah, this is a Peperomia caparata. These are also oh, yeah, very, gorgeous. very easy plants to actually take care of as long as you don't overwater them. Um, this could also be like great desk plants, like things like that. Some things that like we could have as like cubby holes on your shelves. Yeah. There's another one back here that has like kind of the red undersides. I love these, they're like unusual color scheme, mm -hmm. like in some little quadrant for these. I'm with you on that one, especially okay, because cool. like a lot of times plants are not in flower. So being yeah. able to get like a different kind of coloration, like on the foliage, for instance, yeah. is um, important kind of in the house because Things are not always like these orchids in bloom. Yeah, I'm not always in bloom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes we have different types of weather patterns for ourselves. <laughs> cool. Now these plants are actually also very good. These are aglionemas. These are um, very good in lower light conditions. So if something like that ever spoke to you, that could be... Those feel a little bit more like office plants to me. They do feel like office you know. plants, I have to say, probably because so many people use them in the office because the office doesn't have a tremendous <laughs> amount of light. There we are, exactly. Well, I want to work at home, so we can't do that. After our exploration at Plant Shed, I had a real keen idea of what Damon might want for his home. He gave me his budget restrictions, and we agreed that I'd come back the following day to get started. I will only have five hours in his space, though, before he comes back home. So I should be able to get a good start on greening up his space, but we'll see how much I could get done. All right, it's day two at Damon's place, and we just got the delivery in from Plant Shed. Some really beautiful plants. We are actually constricted by the size of the elevator. So even though I really wanted to get a larger ficus lyrata, not a larger fiddle leaf fig, because his space could definitely use a large plant, this was about the size that we could actually get into the elevator. So he'll just have to be patient and watch the ficus lyrata grow because, and it will grow because he has really perfect light for this. Northeast exposure is actually better than the light that I give my ficus lyrata at my house because Mine's close to a southwest facing window and actually gets burned all the time. So this will actually be good for him here. So I can't wait to see this grow. Okay. <laughs> so I got these really nice pots and I thought that we could actually do some greening up on the shelf space because this does get some ambient light, not a tremendous amount. So we have to go with some plants that would be a little bit more comfortable in lower light situations. I'm definitely gonna go with Syndapsis pictus, which is silver pothos or otherwise called satin pothos because I know from my experience in my home, that's actually growing in the interior of my space and it continually grows with surprisingly little amounts of light. And because again, this is an ambient light, this is a Northeast facing window, you do get a little bit of a flood of it. It's not going to grow a lot, but it will be fine and I think will thrive in this section. But of 
course, we'll have to see. I'm gonna treat this a little bit more like a cash po, so just a decorative planter, and we'll just have this guy sitting on top. He's a little bit tall for this one, but I think as he starts to spill down, because it is a little bit more of a hanging plant, you're not even gonna be able to see the nursery pot that he's in. So I'm gonna be planting up some Ripsalis, and this is a type of epiphytic jungle cactus. So Damon already actually has jungle cactus growing in his window. He has a Schlumbergera, which is a Thanksgiving cactus. So I took cue from him because that seems to be doing pretty well, and, I'm, and I know from my experience that Ripsalis actually grows well in my house in lower to kind of indirect light conditions. Again, because this is like growing in the understories of forests, and so it's getting a little bit more like dappled light. So we're gonna try these type of Ripsalis out upstairs in his bookshelf. But because these are epiphytic, they have a little bit more of a well-draining mixture. So what I'm gonna do in this planter is I'm gonna take some Espoma organic potting mix, just regular potting mix, and some of their perlite, which is more of a puffed volcanic stone, which I'll show you soon. And a little bit of their biotone starter because this is just like a little bit of natural plant food that um, it has like some helpful bacteria that you could use in when you're potting plants. And because these plants actually came to me through um, the mail, I just wanna make sure that I'm giving them a little bit more of a better opportunity at growth. So I'm just gonna pour in a little bit of the potting mix and a little bit of this perlite. Generally just like a little bit more one-to-one -one ratio. I can always add a little bit more. I'm also going to add a little bit of this biotone. Just a little sprinkle is gonna be perfect. So I'm just mixing this up and getting this nice consistency here. And you'll smell a little bit of the aroma of the, the biotone, which has this like kind of earthy, organic kind of smell, if you will. So I'm just going to take these out temporarily and just fill in a little bit in the base here just so that there's at least about an inch or an inch and a half to two inches of soil down below for the Ripsalis roots to grow into. Put this right in here and lay that in. And now I'm just gonna add a little bit more of this soil mixture in here. Again, this perlite actually helps build up a little bit more of the aeration of the actual potting mix. If you just use the potting medium, that is fine too, but if you're somebody who has a tendency to overwater, then I would just err on the side of having something that has a little bit more of aeration in the soil, and perlite does just the trick. I'm gonna switch over to my handy dandy spoon. Just really love using kitchen utensils to do potting. I feel like they are sometimes a little bit more effective, especially for smaller plants than sometimes the trowels are. And I'll just worry about the mess later because planting is a messy thing and you just have to go and plant and worry about the mess later. So I'm just gonna water this a bit and then I'm going to take it upstairs. I like leaving it on the edge here because you could actually see the plant from both sides. So as you're kind of walking out, and as you're coming up, and as you're looking up, you can actually see this plant on all the sides. So Damon had mentioned that he wants a plant up that way, so I'm gonna take this Zamiel Colchis Zamifolia up there. But uh, I didn't get any planters, or many planters, for the plants that we have, because I wanted to see really what their size was. But I did get this kind of basket here, and I have a little water tray down below. And this is kind of like a really affordable way to actually plant plants instead of actually getting a large you know, ceramic planter that could cost a pretty penny. And I find that these baskets actually look really good. Sometimes they're folded, so their shapes might be a little odd when you actually take them out, as this one is a little bit odd. But they, they start to actually round up, and this is kind of a good way to display a plant. And we're gonna put this over by this light. Unfortunately, with this space, there is not a lot of light that's coming through here. So you do get a little bit of the ambient light, but because of the ceiling, it's actually quite dark here. So we are going to need to augment this with some grow lights. And we have some 
awesome grow lights that just came out on the market. These are GE LED lights. Now you notice that there's two different ones and I'm going to show you the difference between these two. There's one that's more of a balanced light spectrum and there's one that's more of the advanced red light spectrum. So if you're growing a plant here that does flowers and fruit, then you'd probably want to use this one. We're going to put this one in just for giggles because I wanna show you how it differs from this balanced light spectrum, which is the one that is going to be for seeds and greens. And because this is more of a foliage plant, I mean, it does flower. It's probably not gonna flower up here, but people really buy ZZ plants or Zamiococcus zamiofolia for their foliage. And this is a type of plant that actually does grow well enough in the interior. So I have this lamp here. You can actually see that this increases. So as the plant grows, you don't want it directly right up to the light. You probably want it within six to nine inches away from the light because that is going to give you better light because if you have it too far away to start, the plant is going to stretch and get really leggy. So you want it within six to nine inches. So let's use this one first. This is for flowers and fruit. This is the advanced red light spectrum. I like actually how it's all cardboard packaging because then you could actually recycle all of that. And then you'll notice that this light has a little bit of a wider base. So this is probably about three and a half inches, just so you know, because a lot of lighting fixtures don't have this flare, they're a little bit thinner. Okay, so that's pretty tight. So you can see this is giving off a little bit of a red light. And again, this is for seeds and fruit, but this is actually quite reasonable. Now I have my PAR meter here. I'm gonna hold this up because I am curious actually what the PAR value is going to be for this. Wow, and you can actually see that this is up to around 2000. It's kind of bouncing between 1500 and 2000 unit moles per meter squared per second. So this is actually almost basically full sunlight that you're giving these plants. As I pull the PAR meter away, you could see that this is already going to be moderate light, which is actually going to be totally fine for the ZZ plant. I'm gonna turn this off. Now you can see the balanced light spectrum has that same shape. I'm just going to screw this into the lamp. The other good thing about LEDs is that they are, they might be a little bit more expensive on the front compared to incandescent light bulbs, but LEDs are just more energy efficient over the long term. And you don't want just an incandescent light bulb. That's not going to be powerful enough for a plant. So you want a proper grow light. There you go. Now this is a little bit more of a warmer temperature, which I think is probably going to be the way that we want to go because this is in a living space. So I'm going to hold this up and you could see that very similar. This is actually going to be, this is actually closer to 3000 when I'm holding it up. So it's kind of bouncing back and forth between 2000 and 3000 when I'm holding it directly up to the light. And I actually uh, really like the look of this light. And so sometimes when you have grow lights, they kind of have that like purplish or bluish hue, but they're just getting better and better. And this GE light is absolutely perfect to have in the home. Yep, so if you have it at this height, it's getting a bit more moderate light and we'll actually probably see over time the ZZ plant kind of trailing a little bit more towards the light because this is going to be a stronger light force than actually that window way over there. This is the bio orb, which has its own light and humidity and even misting system. So this will be perfect, I think, for one of the darker rooms because it'll be able to generate its own light and then he'll be able to have uh, a little green space within a contained area like a terrarium like this. So this took me some time to construct and plant. So if you're curious on how I did it, you'll be able to tune into a future episode. So I have this all planted up and you can see just how lush it is. I absolutely love this thing. I'm going to be carrying it upstairs, but I don't want to fill it up with water yet. So, um, because it's just going to be too heavy. So I'm going to just take this up. Oh, that looks so cool. Look at that. Imagine waking up to that. Let's see if I could get the um, lights on and everything. Let me just see. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
That is so cool, look at that. So I just wanna show you what's under the hood here. So you could see that the humidity chamber is right here and I actually could still, you know, stick my arm in here because I do wanna add a little bit of moss in the back just to kind of cover up some of that coconut coir. And I think that, you know, live moss is just so cool to have but difficult to keep in the home unless you do have a terrarium setting. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, live moss into here. You can see, I don't wanna block your way. And it's adding this like really nice carpet in the back. So cool. This will actually keep some of the moisture in, so you probably need to water this a little less because this uh, moss will actually create its own little microclimate in here or help create a little bit more of the microclimate. And there you have it. And here is some water kind of left over that you could put in the, the top up here. I would, pref I would probably use distilled water, to be honest with you, because you don't know what kind of water is in your pipes. A lot, a lot of times our, waters are, our water is fluorinated or chlorinated or has um, heavy minerals in it that could gunk up the system. So I would probably just get distilled water for this. This looks great. I'm super excited about how this actually turned out. And so you could see the Phalaenopsis orchids here, some um, rabbit's foot ferns, some Photonia, Photonia here, Peperomia and Pilea and a Ludicia discolor. Oh, look at that. I mean, I would love to wake up to this every morning and because Damon doesn't have a window in his bedroom, this is a really nice option. So Damon doesn't have a tremendous amount of light in his kitchen. He does have a little window here, but it's kind of in an alleyway. So I thought it would be a really good idea to get him an herb garden for his kitchen. Now, he doesn't do a lot of cooking, but I'm hoping this maybe inspires him to do it a little bit. This is one of the better units that I've seen. Unfortunately, this is just in beta right now. So this is by a brand known as, known as Ecosystems, IKO Systems, and this is Okavanga. And they are probably gonna be doing a crowdfunding campaign for this, but if you like what you're looking at, like I like what I'm looking at, then sign up for their newsletter because this is super cool. I just love the wood finish and they have this kind of magnetic glass up here that you could take out. And so if you have a pet that happens to like to go on your countertop, this is great because it kind of keeps the pet away. It is magnetized also here so you could actually, that's where you fill up the water right around here and it goes down into the base right here and also works by capillary action, very similar to what we saw with the bio orb. So if I just take this off, you could see that this little micro tomato is, has this little ceramic, almost like, like hot dog bun and the water comes down here and soaks up and the plant actually soaks up the water. So it's in a soil based system, which is kind of cool. And again, this keeps actually the humidity going in this particular device as well. So I really like the way that that looks. Now he already had this pothos growing here and I just, I kind of want to take a look at where this is going because I see that it's draping down here. Oh my goodness. I don't even know how I could get down there. I'm way too short. Maybe I could get it from this side. Ow. Oh my God. The other thing we could do is clip this and then I could put this into some water and then propagate it from there. I think that's gonna have a better chance doing that. So I'm gonna clip this at a 45 degree angle and this will be the clipping. That's a really nice sturdy plant right there. But again, I wanna keep it up on the countertop because that's not gonna get any light. I think that looks pretty good. Hopefully it inspires him to cook. So I'm just filling a little bit of the soil up so that it has a little bit more substrate to work with in its roots. And again, I have a little bit more perlite in here because I want this to be airy so that the roots are not asphyxiating in here. Let's see what's happening in here. Okay, wow. Wow, look at this. <laughs> when I say it's all roots, take a look at this. This has no um, drainage either. So this has been, just goes to show you how resilient these plants are because he says this has probably been growing in here for about a decade, which is unbelievable. 
So I'm just gonna do a little gentle fertilizer. This is Espoma's organic indoor fertilizer. It's super gentle. You can see it's only 222, it's nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So you're not really going to over fertilize anything. But basically it's one per pour per quart. So you just do a little shake and you pop open the top. And basically it's one pour per quart. There's a number of bacteria back here, very beneficial bacteria. So that gives a little bit more of life to the soil or the substrate that the plant is in. And since the soil substrate is already wet on the inside, I don't have to like thoroughly wet the soil because typically what I would want to do is put in enough water so that the water comes out from the, the base. But after having checked a lot of these plants, these plants are already pretty wet. Because this is a little leggy, what I might do is actually just give this a good snip up to about here. And this one doesn't even have leaves, so I'm gonna snip that right up to the edge. So I'm just gonna continue to work on this just a little bit longer. And after I finish that, we'll be pretty much ready to kind of show Damon a little bit more of the layout that we have. Not everything is like exactly ready because we still have to go and get some planters, but I think it's gonna be ready enough, at least with the placement so he could see see whether he likes a little bit more of his houseplant home makeover. to greening up this space. There are some things that I really wanted to get to, but just ran out of time. And Damon is coming up the elevator right now. So I have to show him what we did. Hey. Come on in. <laughs> so what have you been up to? Oh my goodness. Well, I have to say it was a lot of work and a little bit of time. <laughs> and we really tried to stay within your budget. So uh -huh. it might not be everything that you wanted, but there's going to be some things that you want. I'm excited. Let's see what you awesome. got. These are something you're gonna be very familiar with. These are Epiprenum aureum. These are the pothos that you have growing in the kitchen, uh -huh. growing in the back over there. Uh -huh. um, I did put a bird's nest fern here with one of the, the planters, which is a lower light plant. Uh -huh. It's called a bird nest fern because of the way that it's structured. But these will eventually start to vine out and then you're going to have that kind of woodland look that you were looking for. Got it. So, so these, so it's the same plant exactly that I have in the other places. So it'll handle this kind of light. Yes. This low light and the infrequent watering. Yes, it should be, it should be fine. And I actually kept, I didn't repot them. I actually kept them in their nursery pots. So if you go down here, mm -hmm. um, you could see that Watch they are them. just okay. in the pot itself. And so the, you know, the reason for that is you could just water them and take them out. Maybe you could use the planter at another time if you want, if you didn't like those planters. So nothing is, you know, permanent uh -huh. here if you, if you don't like it. But um, I have them in their nursery pot and it's sometimes nice to do that because sometimes plants need about two weeks to acclimatize to people's right. homes. Got it. Now, pothos is a little bit easier to acclimatize because they're so, as you've seen. They like, can survive me. They so. survive you, so they can survive just about, you know, the, the coming of apocalypse. We did kind of green up this little space here. Yeah. So you may recognize your clivia, which was actually in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I pulled it up here because I think it's gonna be a little bit happier with a, more of a northeast facing mm -hmm. light. And the ficus lyrata here is, I know, like you could do so much with this vertical space and this will actually get quite large. Now, you're probably going to have to call me back to snip it a little bit because as it grows, and I've seen mine grow, and I never, I never snip mine back, it just gets very lengthy. Um, I can handle that. that <laughs> both tall and wide. So you might actually be reading underneath a fig tree, <laughs> which is not a bad thing. This is your formerly known as philodendron, but now somatophyllum here from uh -huh. your friend. Mm -hmm. And I, I just pulled it here. It was you know, kind of underneath yeah. that little section. I wasn't quite sure whether you were gonna leave it there or not, but I think closer to the window is going to make this really happy. And these do get quite large. Does it make a difference to have these guys getting that direct sun for an hour in the morning as opposed to even on the other side of the room? or are they kind of happy regardless? Yes, because the light comes in this way, right? Yeah. I think it's gonna really like that, especially because morning light is a really nice gentle light. 
typically if you were in you know more of the southwest facing yeah. direction you would get kind of a little bit more of a hot afternoon light and that could actually burn these plants but that morning light is going to do these babies really good okay great this is a peperomia so these are peperomia obtusifolia variegata so these are a semi-succulent plant these are diminutive plants, so they are not going to get quite large. Got it. So they're gonna stay relatively compact. They might get a little bit longer, and sometimes they get a little bit more architectural as well, but um, for the most part, they're slightly slower growers. What's the watering for these? Once a week is gonna to be totally fine for these guys. And for all of these, do you just water them like until some water comes through to the tray, and then that's how I know it's enough? Yeah, that's a really good point, just watering so that it waters like really thoroughly. Now, you'll get a feel too because, you know, one of the ways to feel it is like you get a, get a sense of the pot and how heavy it is when you actually water it thoroughly. Uh -huh. And then if it feels a little less weight than typical, it's you, almost like developing a sensitivity a sense for, it. for it, yeah. I see, so this has its own saucer there. Mm -hmm. So I'll see the water run out. Yeah. How about something like this? So this is in its nursery pot. So this is in the nursery pot. So what you would want to do is just water this thoroughly, and there is a basin underneath this, between this and this. All right. And you want to see the water actually go through to the bottom of the basin. This doesn't have a hole in it, so there's going to be right. no water that falls onto your hardwood floors. But what you want to make sure is that it's not necessarily sitting in water. So if you feel like you've watered it thoroughly and you see water in the, in the basin, you could actually remove it, remove the basin and tip the water out because you don't necessarily want the roots sitting in the water. Got it. However, if you get really good at watering, watering it till it's about three quarters of the way filled with water, like meaning that the soil is about three yeah. quarters of the way filled with water, yeah. is going to be better for this particular plant. Got it, so the basin is just there so I can dump out water if I overwater. Exactly. You don't want to put so much water that it's like kind of sitting yeah. in a puddle. I wouldn't do that. No, you wouldn't do that. It's like a baby in a wet diaper too long. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have uh, some more peperomia and then we have a little shock of color uh -huh. with the orchid. And these orchids are going to be very happy here because they do need a little bit more light and then, um, if it's a little bit cooler uh -huh. towards the evening hours, do yeah. you like turn the heat down at all if it gets too hot in here? Or? The building's in charge. Okay, the building's It's in on charge. all the time in winter and never in the summer. So these will reflower better if it gets a little cooler at night. So that's um, so be, it. having it a little bit more towards the window where there could be a little bit of a draft could actually be good for these. Now, the way to water, you'll notice that it's in this kind of like little plastic container. Uh -huh. The best way to water these is like once almost every two weeks where you just let the tap water if you have or filter water sit and then you dip it in the water and let it sit in there for like an hour or so and then pull it out and then let it completely dry out. You could also maybe you do that in here but you, you don't want to again sitting in water for too long. You'd want yeah. to actually pour, pour this out. So that's you uh -huh. know a little even less frequently than you're yeah. probably watering your plants. Got it. We got uh, one of your snake plants that you're Oh yeah, that about. looks great with the piano. Yeah. So this will get larger, uh -huh. and it might even flower. It might not flower in this light. I'm not quite sure yet, but they do get like long stalks with inflorescences, which is kind of like just interesting. Separate from these, yeah, new, separate new stalks from come these. up. Yeah, another stalk will come up with a little flower on top, um, or like a, a stalk of flowers. We have just a really neutral planter. I, mm -hmm. I stayed really neutral with yeah. the planters, just kind of like gray, matte, white. And you can move this around, but I think having one next to your piano is um, quite nice. I just didn't want anything hanging over your piano. Yeah. <laughs> God forbid that like, <laughs> it gets like goo on your Steinway. <laughs> exactly right. The goo has a better use than yeah. being on the piano. Yeah, exactly. This, I didn't change so much. In fact, it might not look as green, but I did take some old stocks out of this. So some of them were oh, see, yeah. pretty leggy. And so I just kind of cut them back and manicured them a little bit. Pretty leggy, you said? Yes. It's a leggy Lady. if it has many stalks? Well, it has like, you know, a long stalk without, long. Any, without <laughs> any leaves. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. But you might actually see some of them bush out. I did change out one because yeah. this one actually had no plant in it whatsoever. It was just um, sitting in a pile of wet soil. <laughs> <laughs> and it looked like it had a plant in it because one of the plants was oh, trailing see. down. It's over it. So I just um, switched it out with the Syndapsis pectus. But you could actually see 
how this one's like really bushy compared to these that have like started mm -hmm. to scramble. So this, this is just a young version of the same plant? Actually, no, this is um, a completely different genus. This is Syndapsis oh. pictus, it's otherwise oh. known as satin pothos, but it's actually not even in the same genus. This is Epiprenum mm. and this is a Syndapsis. Totally tolerant to lower light conditions in the same way that Epiprenum and these philodendrons are. And since they've done well enough here, I yeah. decided that like you could go with a little Syndapsis and actually see if that works. If for some reason it doesn't work, you could always get another cutting of an epiprenum and actually put it there. But I'd like to kind of trial it out and it gives it a little bit more of um, kind of like a just different variation. Uh -huh. The other thing that I did over here is actually fertilized. So um, the soil was already pretty wet, but I ended up using this fertilizer, which I'm going to give to you and have here. This is super easy. It's uh, an organic fertilizer and you just need to do one pour per quart. Got it, how often do you do that? I would keep this to maybe every month to two months in the growing season, so spring, summer, and fall. And then I do think that these will be a little bit happier because I do see some of this like yellowing of the leaves. Is the yellow from not enough nutrients or too much water or not enough water or what? It's a, you know, yellowing leaves could be multiple signs and it could be, it's definitely not that they're getting too much light. It's probably, <laughs> it's probably one where they haven't um, had nutrients or that they have been sitting in water or both. You know, so it's, it's really hard to tell. But I do know that like, these could survive in water for quite some time, but even after a while, if they don't have any more nutrients, they will start to lose their coloration. Got it, looks good. Mm -hmm. So here in the kitchen is something that's really special. This may inspire you to cook. This is an Okavanga Ecosystems. Um, it's beta testing. So this is not even something that you could get on the market. So you are oh. <laughs> in luck with something that's a little bit more special. But you have all these different types of plants and you could actually take this off and you could start to see and eat. And so what are, what are these? We got basil, we have sage, we have dill. Um, we have, I can't remember what this one is, but we have some lettuce and then we have these little tiny tomatoes. <laughs> That's a green tomato yeah. there. They oh, will well, turn red, funny. but they're tiny. They that actually don't get much funny. They don't get much bigger than this. Like cherry tomatoes? Yeah. But they don't get much, much bigger than that. Like How long does it take to grow a tomato in, in your kitchen beta box? You'll have to test it because okay, it's a beta we'll, test. We'll find out. <laughs> So this I actually snipped off of here because it was clambering down there. Um, yeah, this goes everywhere. This thing's unstoppable. <laughs> and you notice that I put um, another, uh, another peperomia and another syndapsis uh -huh. here where your clivia had been. That's right, with the clivia by the window now. This looks better because you can see more of the tree outside. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and I think that we could even probably do better in kind of like trailing this around. But for right now, I just, mm -hmm. I just made sure that I picked him up off the ground so he could grow up here. It looks great. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna look at are these shelves. And we just added a few extra plants here with some of the planters. You could see this really beautiful Japanese one. Oh yeah. Is this the same plant from the kitchen? Yes, this is the same plant from the kitchen and also the one that I did a replacement down there. So this is another syndapsis. These actually shingle in nature, but most people buy them as hanging basket plants, so they will start to trail down. And this looks kind of like the Christmas cactus I have. It does. It's actually another type of jungle cactus called a ripsalis. And um, so these are also a little bit more conditioned for dappled light conditions. I am curious to see if there's gonna be enough light for this one so we could see. And if it starts to look like it's getting sad, we could always move it towards the window. So what kind of sadness will it have? Will it be yellow? Will it- It will probably start to brown. Turn brown. Turn yeah. brown. We have this one up here, which is another epiprenum. So again, these do so well in your house that I think that we're just going to have this one and it'll probably end up trailing uh -huh. down in a very Great. similar manner. Great. If ever gets to be trailing too much, you could always clip it back at a node. At a node? Yeah, so right just, here. Just, just at a juncture between? Mm -hmm. Yep, so you could always just like clip it back there at a 45 degree angle. You could just like take right here, take this little leaf off, put it in some water, and you'll have a propagation. Yeah. It some over favorite. here. Yeah. This one, they call it Tillandsia, but this has oh, cool. recently been put into another one called Willisia. It's, so it's a type of bromeliad. Um, this actually starts to turn into flower, but you can see 
that had probably already flowered because there's a second one growing off of it. So these grow a little bit more uh -huh. like offsets. I see what you mean. But I have this one growing in my house that is in a relatively lower light condition, so I think it'll do really well here. It looks great there. Hmm. Another pothos? Our friends, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Our standbys. And, um, and very simple planters, just like a little bit more of a Nordic uh -huh. appeal. Yeah, I love it. So you had said that you wanted a plant right here, but it is relatively dark in this area. Uh -huh. So I chose a plant called a ZZ plant. It's called Zamiococcus zamiafolia, and these are actually good in a lower light condition, but I didn't want to make them too sad. So we have this grow light uh -huh. by GE just came out with these, and these are LED grow lights, and this has been on for almost all day, and you could feel that it's not that hot. Uh -huh. So it doesn't burn hot. Oh, it's I see. a balanced light spectrum. And it's, it's actually like relatively pleasant on the eyes. It's not like you're having like a red or blue light. It looks great. Yeah, so this, what light would this usually have? How much, if it? This could actually handle anywhere from a lower indirect light all the way to a higher light condition. So this right. plant is probably, I would always recommend as like one of the easier plants to have in the home. That's great. I like it because it has this kind of like long, rigid stem and these firm leaves. How, how much will this grow? This could actually grow pretty high. It will start to kind of curl over a little bit, so it'll start to get a little bit broader. Got it. But with the light up this way, um, it might actually not curl as much because this is the direction of the light, so it might actually grow up a little bit more, so you might have a little bit more of an erect plant. And as it grows, you want to keep it around six to nine inches away from the light, so as it grows. Just lift that up. Yes, yeah. you could just lift that up. Okay, cool. And what's, and what's this here? Oh, so this is like one of the best ways, I think, you know, just keeping within your budget instead of like having to buy planters all the time. This is just the nursery pot. Yeah. And there's a basin underneath it, so you uh -huh, can see in there. I see. And when you water it, it'll go into the basin. And so even though this is a, a fabric, it, it's uh, going yeah. to act as like a, a, a planter pot that you could keep. Uh -huh. And if you ever want to buy a nice ceramic planter on your own, you could totally do that. But these are just kind of like the affordable way to kind of make it look beautiful. Yeah, it's like putting some clothing on the, uh, <laughs> on the, on the nursery pot. Exactly. It's a little sweater. Exactly. Great, <laughs> looks good. This is one of my favorites. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what is this monster? This is a bioorb terrarium, and I'm going to have to teach you how to use it afterwards. But okay. it has a little humidity chamber here. You could you could water it along the edges. You don't ever want to water it above this white base, but like you could water down here, and the water actually wicks up um, through the base of this through the coconut coir, and will actually water the plants. But you you will see it; it'll start to mist and. We could always have a little timer, a little digital timer, so it kind of turns on and off. But um, this is what wow. you're going to be waking up to every morning. That's incredible. It's like, it's like kind of sleeping in some creekside meadow <laughs> with all these things. And, and so what, are, what do we have in here? We saw this in the store. Yes. Yeah, so these are the Fetonias that you yeah, liked. Sure yeah, yeah. So this is a white nerve plant, and this is a pink nerve plant. This one I thought you'd really like. It hasn't really um, opened out its uh -huh. leaves, but you could see that it has yeah. this like black velvety sheen with like pink pinstripes. Uh -huh. That's a Ludicia discolor. It's actually a type of orchid, but um, it's called a jewel orchid for the color of its leaves. These are um, rabbit's foot ferns, and you have some orchids and anthurium in the back, and then you ha actually have some live moss along the edges oh, over here. Oh, cool. So all of this gets watered the same. Yes. Each plant takes the water it needs. Yes, exactly, because it's um, getting water from the bottom. So as you water, you might want to, you know, you could take this out. You could unplug this and kind of take this out. That's re totally removable. And just water along the edge. And I would use a distilled water. I think that's going to be probably healthier for the plants or something that's filtered. It will just kind of wash along the base and go down, and then the fabric will wick it up, and the plants will drink as they need. I don't think you're going to need, need to be watering this very much because in a terrarium setting, it kind of keeps its own little ecosystem going. So instead of once a week, this is, you know, every couple weeks? You, you know what? You're going to have to find have to out. figure it out. We'll yeah. <laughs> because I have never had one of these before, so you're going to tell me. All right. You're going to call All me right. and tell me. <laughs> Great. It looks really cool. 
We started green it up a little bit. I think there's so much more that we could do here, but I think um, maidenhair ferns could be a little finicky for people, but I think they might actually do extremely well here. And because you have this like fancy spa watering system, you might actually just take them here, water them, let them dry off and then kind of put them back. It's like, it's a no brainer for me to actually, you know, try these out here. So they prefer to be kind of misted than to have the soil watered? They, you could water the soil, but you could also, they would probably love misting as well. It's just like an easier thing because if you do that, they'll get misted and the soil will be watered as well. So some of them are still in their nursery pots. I think that if they survive here for more than two weeks, they think get them their own pots so that obviously they're not like, you know, getting this wood um, too wet. But let's see how you do okay. with these. Fair enough. They look great in here. I have one more thing to show you. So this is one of my favorite pieces that I got um, for you. This is like a little Ikebana vase. And you could just put like, you know, oh, cut flowers cool. or dried flowers in here. But I really love the shape of this. Is this iron or what is this? Yeah, it's a, it's a, type, of, it's a type of metal. I'm not quite even sure what it is, but it's so well made. And it's, it's heavy, it's got like weight to it. And it just reminded me of this kind of, I love the shape and also reminded me just of like, it's not a music note, but it kind of has like an element of, of music. It looks like a horn. A yeah, bit. a little bit like that. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And I got you this book because I know you study a little bit more of like Western philosophy, but I, I really wanted to get you this, which is, I, I've heard this is like one of the more comprehensive on Japanese philosophy, so. Oh, that's, that's very like, kind. Yeah. Thank that's you. That's my little gift to you. This is terrific. Yeah. Yeah, the place looks lovely. <laughs> it's really exciting. See how this goes. Yeah. See how you like it. See how it fits it in. You know, move around as you see fit. And um, yeah, let me know how, how it goes and if we can actually do part two down the line. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. That's terrific. Let me know if you were able to apply some of what we learned from this episode. Share your experience with your own space in the comments below. In the next few episodes, we'll take a deeper dive into watering, fertilizing, pest management, and more. And if you like this video and want to see more makeovers, then give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to be notified as soon as a video is uploaded, then click on the notifications bell. And as always, you could follow me on my personal journey on my Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn and on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com. There's so, it's so funny because you have such a ginormous place. Like there could be so many more plants that we could fit in here to make it look green. Because as I was starting to put them, I'm like, it doesn't even look green. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's right. The ratio of gray to green to get know, that much green in here would take a while. Like, oh, like you know and the thing is you want them like already like grown out you i almost yeah, yeah, yeah i yeah, almost yeah, like yeah. feel like i need to bring my plants in here and like throw them in. well you're used to your place which is which is like covered covered, covered you know you can't can't see any wall or no, ceiling no. yeah this would be that way i think in about yeah. 25 years yeah you know no, no a little Just bit one of the apartments you have a really big window it could be sooner It'd than be that <laughs> yeah